Now, indeed, you're very welcome to this afternoon's What Matters program on Lear Media TV. And a uh, very special thanks to Dr. Mary Honan and Pat Barry for all of the background setting up. And I'm delighted to be joined by John Leach of Water Safety Ireland. But I'll tell you, I couldn't have chosen a better backdrop because if you look out at the backdrop of my screen and look at the backdrop of John Leach's screen, we're surrounded by magnificent visual sights of Atlantic water, et cetera, et cetera. And I know after it has been a long 12 months, 14 months nearly going into it for people and fatalities of COVID, um, families separated and they could not come home, they could not go to each other's premises. It has been a very, very, very tough year on Irish people at home and abroad. And we send our, definitely, we send our thoughts and sympathies to the people of India who are undergoing the most obnoxious, abnormal, stressful situation of COVID. And if ever we wanted to see um, what COVID virus has done, take a look at that. And my own doctor, Dr. Kieran Murphy of the day, said to me this morning, in last January of this year, we were on the very, very verge of a similar situation. Now, why I'm saying that is that the economy is opening up in the sense of restrictions as it is, but also uh, people are now allowed to go out and travel. Thank God for that. And in this beautiful scenic area on the West Coast, the Northwest, the South, the Midwest, we're touching 17, 18, 19 degrees today, which is absolutely fantastic. But we're heading for the countryside. We're heading for rural Ireland. We're heading for our wonderful, magnificent waterways. But as they say, user beware, the sea is a dangerous playground. And I'm delighted to be joined by a man well known at home and abroad, John Leach of Water Safety. You would have seen him on television there, RTE News yesterday. John, it's great to make a connection with you again. Yes, very much so, John. Great to be on air with you and your listeners and your viewers. I'm very, very pleased and honoured to be. Uh, yeah, I had a busy week really on television. I was on TV on Wednesday as well because uh, the government made history in that the first time ever three ministers, Minister Simon Coveney, Minister uh, uh, Hildegard Nocton and Minister Heather Humphreys uh, jointly um, uh, launched a Be Summer Ready uh, leaflet for the Be Summer Ready campaign. It's a mm -hmm. fairly straightforward leaflet that uh, Met Aaron, ourselves, and the Coast Guard um, uh, designed, if you like, uh, for the summer. For, and it's gone out in, in today's papers in the Independent, uh, 130,000 copies of it to get yes. into people's homes and to try and get people to you know, become aware of water safety uh, this summer because obviously everybody's going to be staying at home and holidaying at home. And so they really do need to be much more aware maybe than they normally would. Uh, and uh, obviously we, we want to get the safe water safety messages out. I think the primary one really will be when the lifeguards are deployed, I mean, they're still in training at the moment, they're still being tested uh, and uh, they'll be interviewed by the local authorities. There's a, a 130 locations around the country where the lifeguards uh, work. Obviously, in Limerick, you have Lynn and Kilpiri uh, of Piers. Uh, they're, they're lovely, beautiful swimming areas there. Uh, normally, the cover is weekends, normally only in June, and then all of July and August. And of course, you need to be there sort of three and a half hours either side of high water, really. It's when it's a lovely yes. place, beautiful place to swim. But those lifeguards, they're um, trained up to the International Life Saving Federation's uh, world standard. Uh, were recognized by uh, uh, our Beach Lifeguard Award is recognized by the International Life Saving Federation. Not all countries in the world would be at that standard, but we are. Uh, so we really are uh, very, very proud of our lifeguards and yes. they really do great work that they do. Um, but the main thing for our listeners, really, is when they are holding this year, is to go to the various beaches like Clare, up to our neighbor, your neighboring county, has got some of the most magnificent uh, beaches uh, you know, on the West Coast and to use those lifeguarded ones. And there's a whole list of them up on our website, uh, watersafety.ie. And we recommend that you use those lifeguarded beaches, particularly for novice and casual 
uh, uh, swimmers, you know, people who are not really used to, to swimming. I mean, obviously, we have seen this wonderful explosion of open water swimming, never seen in the history of the States before, at the moment, as a result of the pools being closed, and people also realizing that the health benefits, both mental and physical, of uh, open water swimming are really much greater than going into the swimming pool. And also the sociability of it, it becoming uh, really great social uh, outlets in a safe environment, you know, an open air where people are keeping a few meters apart and everything. And so they, they, they after the swim, they have great fun. They have, bring their own flasks. Or then the, a lot of these um, horse boxes and trailers and things have moved in with the coffee shops or coffee stations uh, nearby. And it's made it a very safe and sociable um, uh, environment. And as you know, we're not going to be getting out of this pandemic in any great hurry. So no. I, I think that it will continue for quite some time. And in fact, uh, I was talking to the CEO of uh, Ireland Active there recently. Uh, they're the, the, sort of the governing body that looks after all the swimming pools in the country and the, you know, all the, the gyms. And, and they are they're genuinely worried that, I mean, the people, a lot of people will simply not come back to their swimming pools at all, that they will stay swimming uh, 365, if you like, throughout the year. Uh, in open water because it's uh, it's healthier for them, it's um, more sociable, and uh, for that reason they they are very concerned obviously for their, their future. And, uh, and that's the point, John, as well that you know human nature as it is, we all want to go out, we want to have a walk, we want to go into the water now, probably starting in May. Even though I know some people in my hometown of Glen have been doing it right through the year, you know, not swimming but per se going into the water and coming out and getting accustomed to it again. Um, but, you know, the whole idea of basic common sense rules, don't eat a meal or don't swim after eating a heavy meal, avoid alcohol like it never existed when you're entering the water. Common sense rules, you know, that because I was thinking it must be very, very emotionally difficult on lifeguards to actually witness a fatality in the water, near drowning of young children or elderly people or accidents. It has to play on them as well, being human beings, John. Yes, indeed it does. Uh, thankfully, um, it's incredibly rare for a lifeguard to have to deal with a drowned person. They have, they have would have dealt with quite a lot would be um, somebody having a, a heart attack you know and dying on the beach and uh, they have saved by the few people over the years from heart from that they've been able to revive them and, and kept them alive uh, but thankfully our our lifeguards are so good that i mean their main thing is to prevent the person getting into situations where they are going to go into a drowning situation and that and by doing that that's why we, we don't have drownings on our lifeguard beaches when the lifeguards are there and the red and the yellow flag is hoisted because they are constantly uh, vigilant and on watch, looking out for uh, you know, the children. Uh, you know, it's, it's just like me laugh, but there's over 200 children have to be reunited with their, their parents or their guardians on beaches. With these mobile phones, people get distracted. And of course, in a busy beach, the child will just drift, uh, you know, head away down towards the water because they should be on the children love water. And then if they take their head out of the phone and they realize, oh my God, my, my I lost my child. And so, of course, it's straight down to the lifeguard station to try and find out where the child is. And the lifeguards are, are the ones who very often are the ones who have to find the child and reunite it with its parents or its guardians. So that's one thing they do. But last year, they rescued 468, I think it was, uh, people were rescued on our beaches, our lifeguard beaches. Wow. For people. Can you imagine if there was no lifeguards there? I mean, it could be a, a dreadful. I mean, if you go back uh, many decades, I mean, there used to be awful uh, drowning tragedies on our beaches because we didn't have sufficient uh, lifeguard waterways. But uh, really, since it was really since the Second World War, and your neighbouring county Clare, that's where uh, the, the lifeguard started. Milton yes. Malbay, uh, mm -hmm. was there. It started yeah, 1935 uh, onwards, and, and and then formally then established under the the Red Cross, actually yes. the Irish Red Cross, uh, from 1945 to 1971 when it was taken out of the Red Cross. And then uh, the Irish Water Safety Association was established. And then, of course, it got subsumed into the National Safety Council in 1987 because um, Charlie Huffley wanted to undo any good thing that Bobby Malloy or Desi O'Malley had done at the time. 
And because Kofi Malloy had established yeah, the organization, it was subsumed from 1987 right through to 1999. And I mean, drownings, regrettably, were very high in those, uh, in those days. But uh, since we got our in independence back again, which was in 2000, uh, drownings have just been continually going down. However, we, uh, that overall they've been going down, but we are concerned that accidental ones are beginning to creep up again. And that's really because the sheer volume of numbers of people who enjoy aquatic activities, which never did in the history of, of our state before. I mean, there's more boats in the country, there's more kayaks, there's more uh, surfers, there's more stand-up paddleboard. Uh, I mean, these, these are the global yeah. numbers. And so they, there's uh, how, sorry, tens of thousands more people at risk you know, throughout the summer, which normally, you know, in the olden days, people didn't have boats, they didn't have all, all this, this, this uh, activity. And, we, and angling, of course, is huge and it's grown huge, especially since the pandemic, because we, regrettably, as you're aware, there's a lot of unemployed people and uh, there's nothing to do, so they go angling, which, which is, of course, a brilliant thing to do, it's very therapeutic. And, uh, but at the same time, we had, we lost six, yeah, we lost six anglers uh, last summer. And we lost seven swimmers, so that should give you an idea of the, the, the numbers. So, just think of those those families. I mean, the devastation. So, we want to avoid that happening. This oh, absolutely yes. Now, I I understand as well, um, John. There's uh, something in the region of area. Is it 400 lifeguards that are coming on stream in training and being examined, etc. As well, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Overall, there'll be 400 uh, nationwide. Uh, yeah. And uh, you're correct, some counties are ahead of others in that they have trained and examined them and they, they're now going to be employed by the local authorities. But uh, certainly some counties have not got there yet. Uh, with, with, with the, uh, the, the training is going on, right, but not the examination hasn't happened. That will happen. And they all have to pass an exam before they can be employed. One thing being qualified, but they then have a, there's a high standard that they must reach, uh, which is even higher than the, the world, than the International Life Saving Federation. Uh, award and so they get they get pushed very hard uh, and then it's also how you then decide who actually gets the, the job at the end of the day if you're honest, yes, the stronger swimmers the stronger border uh, the ones who are stronger in the surf they're, they're, they're the ones who, who tend to get the job and ones who are mature enough you know to be reliable to be vigilant to be responsible it's a very responsible job for a young person and uh, it's, it's rather interesting but a lot of the lifeguards uh, you know, around the world, go on to much greater things, including Joe Biden, who is a former lifeguard. Uh, right. So you know, it, it, it is a very responsible job, and to put that responsibility on young shoulders, yes. great experience for them, of course, for, for their personal development. Uh, and of course, a lot of them lifeguards uh, that we train here in Ireland, they might just do maybe one season on our beaches, or and then they they go off around the world and they'll get employed in the States or uh, in Australia or you know, wherever, wherever they, they, they go, Canada. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that way. I, I was just uh, wondering, I, I was just picking up some scripts there as well. <laughs> um, it, it, it's funny, but it's serious as well, that uh, the lifeguards in Galway and South Hill are being put through their every sort of test they're going through from mud to wet to everything, but it's, it, it's part of the course. Yeah, it has to be the training, the, and and the stronger the training is, I mean, the, the better, the, the higher standard, of course, uh, of the of the lifeguard, and that's why they put them really do put them through the, the paces, and that that piece on RT last night was, you know, if you, you probably saw, um, they were they were pushed quite hard, and, and, but they need to be, because uh, it's it is about life saving, you know, it's really it's such an important uh, job. Now, the other thing, John, is what advice would you give people? we say uh, entering the water for the first time this year. I mean, the temptation would be to go after the meal or whatever, you know, but there are uh, principles of safety. Yeah, and, and you're right, at this weekend, for instance, there's water, uh, even when, we're, when we were filming at La Pre last night, you know, it was seven o'clock, and should, there was almost about 30 people in you know, swimming uh, yeah. in La Pre at a long point. But so I think the, the, the important thing is, the water is still cold, it's about 12 degrees, 11 degrees, depending where you're swimming. Uh, so it's still relatively cold. And if you're yes. not being in the water, then cold shock is the singular uh, contributing factor to all drownings on our island nation. 
Uh, that's what that's what causes uh, drowning more than anything else. It's a, you know that that awful sensation yes. when you hit yeah. cold water. So the thing to do is is always to go into the water fairly slowly, and to throw a little water down the back of your neck, because mm-hmm. that prepares the body uh, uh, and, and the heart particularly for yeah. you know cold water immersion, which is what you're, you're going to do. Uh, and always, obviously, ne- obviously, you never swim alone, but you swim in a group. And and even if you're swimming in a group, we're very much recommending the, the body system. That, you know, that, that both of you are watching you out for each other. And we do recommend the use of the tow floats. The tow floats are very inexpensive. And uh, most, uh, all, all the serious swimmers now would use them. They want to say serious, I mean, the ones who swim like most days of the week, right throughout the year. And they're very inexpensive. And all it is, it's just a, a boy uh, where you, it's got a waterproof um, pocket in it normally where you can put in your phone. Uh, so you can use, you can, if you got into trouble, you can use your phone um, yes. to contact the, the Coast Guard on dialing 112 and that's what the Coast Guard. Some people even bring a VHF radio and they, they use uh, channel 16 if, should they get into trouble. Uh, but those tow floats are very important because they, they help other users, you know, like people who are sailing or fishermen who are fishing to see you in the water because a swim cap alone, although, and it should always be a bright one, obviously, but uh, very often in, in certain light and in certain way, you cannot see that cap, and, but you would tend to see the float because it moves and the action of the, the movement catches the eye of a, a, another mariner and then he's able to keep, he or she's able to stay away from you. Uh, but we've noticed too that a lot of the counties now, a lot of the swimming areas, they're now, uh, um, they're, they're like, they're cornering off, if you like, in a way with using yellow boys uh, at certain distances so that people know how far to swim to. And, and they become very popular and other mariners stay away from the yellow boys and yes. let the swimmers enjoy, the, you know, safety inside this sort of zone area. Right. And, and we do, we, we, we welcome that and, and quite a few counties are doing it now. Now, we've heard over the last while as well, tragically, again, uh, you know, in a very warm day, maybe inland, uh, people attempting to go into quarries or old quarries where there might be a, a form of lake or any lake. And that's, it all presents up in a terrible disaster for young people as well. Yes, we did. Remember a few years ago, we had that awful tragedy of the two boys, the two great friends yes. uh, outside yep. Ennis, and they lost their lives. It's terribly, terribly tragic. Uh, and uh, it's interesting, uh, just if I may go off a slight tangent, um, the sister of one of the boys, um, uh, she has owns a company, parts own a company called uh, Wicks and Wax, a candle company outside Ennis. And she's going to do some work with us in trying to raise awareness about not swimming in quarries and the huge dangers that lie within it. Because but the, the, the water is always up to cold, as you described, but also the sides are very steep. And so, uh, uh, you know, getting out of the water can be incredibly different, but they're difficult. And so she's going to do some work with us uh, on that. Uh, it's always good to have somebody who's close to the person who's down, rather than just me. I'm only a suit. You know what I mean? Uh, in, in, the, the listeners would tend to listen to her rather than me. It, but, is there uh, but back to what... Yeah, is there something, John, um, I, I, as a layman now, I'm only speaking like in the sense that if you go into a lake or a quarry that there's no buoyancy or something, is that what happens? Well, you are right. It, there's 14% less buoyancy in fresh water than in salt water. You're absolutely right. So it is easier to swim in salt water uh, than in fresh water. And that would be a contributing factor as well. It would. Uh, but I think the main one really is the cold shock. Uh, when they hit, hit the water, because very often, because it's they're steep sided, you can't go walk in slowly. That's the ideal uh, area that, that we'd ask people to swim in. And there are lots of them around the place which are not lifeguarded uh, lakes and rivers where you have the public rescue equipment, where you have a, a shallow uh, shelving bottom, you know, so you can wade out the safe ingress uh, and access, uh, egress and access to the water, uh, and that you can wade up to your, as it were, your belly button. And then a, a swim parallel to the, the bank, the river bank or the, the lake shore or whatever, and stay within your depth. That's the main thing. Swim within your depth, and stay yeah, within your depth. And then if you get cramped and you feel bad, which they all do from time to time, you just lower your legs and wade back ashore. 
but unfortunately, if you're out, out of debt, out of debt, that unfortunately went down and you can start. Yeah. But I, I think, John, just to conclude, that we would like to say a very special thank you from the na the nation to yourself, uh, your colleagues in Water Safety Ireland, of the very, very important life saving educational work that you do. Very important, being an island and access to all the waters, north, south, east, and west. Also to our land and sea rescue personnel who do a tremendous job, our air personnel, our army personnel, the fire brigade, ambulance services that provide such, and the Gardaí that provide such an essential backup for life saving and unfortunately dealing with fatalities as well. And I think that has to be recognized because uh, without all of you, uh, we'd have far more fatalities and serious accidents on our waterways as well, John. Yeah, very much so. And I, I, I think maybe you, you're aware that uh, every year, now normally we would do it in Dublin Castle, but we would have our annual award ceremony. And we recognise all the bystanders and indeed, and a lot of them would be Gardaí who just, who just come up onto a situation where somebody's drowning in the water and they affect the rescue and they save them. And so they get the Seiko Just In Time Rescue Award. Uh, and so they, from, from the minister, our minister will uh, normally you know, do, do, do the uh, presentation and we get the photograph taken. But obviously last year uh, we had to do it virtually, I'm afraid, but it's actually up on our website, you can look at it. But we had yeah. to do it virtually uh, instead. But yeah, we, they, they, those people are recognized uh, and deserve the recognition. I was very pleased to see one of the winchmen uh, there recently, he was uh, made an award by the Coast Guard for his uh, rescue, uh, rescue out in the Iron Islands as well. Yeah, so it's great to see these people being um, recognized yes. and awarded uh, for their, their valor and their bravery and their bravery. Yeah, it's really good. In all yeah. weathers as well, because even during the summer season or late spring or early spring, you can have massive storms. I think, in fact, actually, Med Aaron are, are talking about a storm developing. That could may or may not hit us. I, I don't know, but some system there as well that could cause uh, turbulence. But John, uh, I know that this is only a number of series, and we appreciate you coming on air today with us. And it's to really send a message out to the people uh, there, because you know, if you're in the any part of the country, you could be up in the beautiful Connemara coast, Galway coast, looking out at beautiful Aranakil Islands. My God, heaven heaven on earth, uh, or down in the southwest looking out at the Skelly or the east coast. We're, we're just blessed, but we just have to respect the sea. We have to respect the waterways, you know. But thank you, John, and we'll be talking to you again during the summer, please God. Great, John. Well, thank you so much uh, for having me on air, and it's a great pleasure to be on air with your listeners and your viewers again. Thank you. Right. Thank you, John. Okay. That's it from the What Matters program with myself, John Prendergast, and the company of John Meach of Water Safety Ireland. And, you know, go on their website to get all of the um, beaches that have lifeguard, fully qualified lifeguard uh, personnel, and all the tips that are there as well about what to do and what not to do. And for all our safety, I think it's very, very important. So from uh, Papari, Dr. Mary Holden, and myself, John Prendergast, have a very good and a safe day. And if you're driving out to the coast, please be careful. Go to Mina Market, took it slow. Thank you, John. Perfect. Thank I you very much, John. Great stuff. We, we keep another few weeks and we into the summer, we'll talk again and just any further updates that you have. That would be brilliant. Thank you. I look forward to it. Okay. Thank you, John. Thanks, Bye. John. God bless you. Take care.